Good morning, and welcome to St. John Paul II Parish. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. We will begin with the hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and love from Jesus Christ, who calls us to conversion, be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, my brothers and sisters, to this, our celebration of the Eucharist, Palm Sunday, of the Passion of the Lord. Today, this Sunday, we reflect on the death and resurrection of Jesus, the meaning that that death has in our life. We pray to God that he may open our heart to know his love, to experience his salvation. Now, my friends, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let us pray for forgiveness. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie 
Son. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning and afternoon, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned my back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself 
becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, <coughs> that is, the whole Sanhedrin held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, you say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! And kept striking his head with a reed, and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby 
Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. <clears throat> they gave him wine, drunk with mirth, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what it should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani. Which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two, from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise to Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Today, we are in the middle of a paradox. On the one hand, we are filled with joy. As Jesus entered Jerusalem, throngs of people rejoice. The promised Savior has finally come. The Messiah is here. Redemption is at hand. But then, on the other hand, we turn towards the sorrowful narrative of our Lord's rejection suffering and death with his passion. Palm Sunday is also Passion Sunday. It is a solemn, silent moment. How can a day of triumph be filled with both joy and sorrow? Because what seems to be Christ's defeat is actually his victory the victory of everlasting love. A man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. That's what Jesus taught, and that's what he did in his passion, to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that his love for us has no limits. The angels sang 
Glory to God in the highest when Jesus was born by in Bethlehem. And now the people sing Hosanna in the highest as Jesus entered Jerusalem. Both entrances were motivated by God's love, the same love that led Jesus to be obedient to the Father, even to the point of death. So as to reverse the disobedience of Adam, to pay the price of our sins, and rescue man from hopelessness and injustice. We have solved our paradox. The source of our sorrows is sin, our sins, the cause of Christ's suffering. But the source of our joy is Christ's love. The very reason Jesus was willing to suffer and the very power that through his sacrifice on, on the cross conquers our sins. And so Christians can always live inside the paradox of Palm Sunday, can always find joy. The joy of Christ is limits love, limitless love, even amidst the profoundest sorrows. Everyone knows the expression, hindsight is 2020. But the paradox of Palm Sunday actually gives us 2020 foresight. Only God knows the details of the future. But through the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, he has already revealed to us the general pattern. We know that as long as we stay united to Christ through prayer, the sacraments, and obedience to his will, all of our crosses, our sufferings, failures, and frustrations will be transformed into resurrections. And that knowledge gives us all the wisdom and strength we need for our journey through life. Pope Benedict explained in his last encyclical letter, Save by Hope. In this letter, he said that faith is hope. The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the proof of things not seen. The Pope explained that through faith, there are already present in us the things we are, that are hoped for, the whole through life. In other words, our faith in Christ gives us certainty that Christ's promises of healing, justice, and everlasting happiness will come true, just as his promise about his resurrection came true. And so, because of that certainty, we can begin to experience that fullness of life, even while we carry our crosses through this fallen world. And so, the more deeply we believe in the mystery Christ has revealed, eternal life and resurrection of the faithful, the more easily we can find meaning in our past, joy in our present, and confidence to walk towards the future. Focus always on Christ. The Holy Spirit will lead us as we spend more time with Christ in personal prayer and come together for the special liturgies during the week. If we live this week well, seven days from now, we will know Christ's love for us better. And so we will be better able to experience true Christian joy, even in the midst of life's trials. But there are many people around us who do not have this faith. Each of no of us knows some of them, neighbors, colleagues, even family members. Pope St. John Paul II used to say 
that the best way to grow in our own faith was by giving it away to others. This week, strengthened by our celebration today, let's put that theory to the test. Christ's victory is too precious to keep it for ourselves. Together, let us profess our faith in God. Let us profess our faith with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, comes substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the death and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we present our prayers to God our Father. We pray for our needs and the needs of our brothers and sisters. For Pope Francis and leaders of the church, may the Lord bless their efforts to spread the gospel to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For lawyers and judges, may God's just judgment inform them in seeking truth, justice, and dignified treatment for all who come before them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are persecuted, may the Lord bless them with strength and patience in bearing their crosses and hope in enduring their sufferings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Fred and our boys in Haiti, may they know God's love and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our RCIA candidates who are preparing for the Easter sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. For all catechumens and candidates everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, especially Irene Montigny, Scott Shukai, and all who had died from the coronavirus. May they enjoy eternal glory in God's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of our parish prayer circles and those intentions we may now hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ heal our, our heart, O God, and may his resurrection bring us life so that we may live as your children. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we did not merit it, by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once and for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Song to song to song to Dominus Deus of Plenty soon chili et enam, Gloria to all, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become 
the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of, of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium fide. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your program church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this, your family, O Lord, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion. O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, on earth as, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver, deliver us, us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by, it, by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father Ken's bulletin column talks about the annual novena to the Divine Mercy Chaplet, which starts around the world on Good Friday. Father Ken's column also talks about Divine Mercy Sunday and how we will celebrate it here at our parish. Please read that. Last weekend, we announced that Pope Francis had asked our parish to support the Pontifical Good Friday collection. All donations may be placed in the collection basket at the doors of the church. Please make checks payable to the Diocese of Worcester. Confessions this Holy Week um, are Tuesday, 4 p.m. at St. Mary's Church and 7 p.m. at the Ministry Center, Wednesday, 11 a.m. at St. Mary's Church. And we'll be live streaming from Notre Dame for Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil, and Easter Sunday. For Holy Thursday, check the time of the Mass. That will be the time that will be live streaming. The same for Good Friday. And for Easter Sunday, we'll live stream the 10 a.m. Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Look, we pray, O Lord, on these your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
sol.